Welcome, race fans, to the Harold Lowry Super Speedway Series. We're here tonight at Talladega Super Speedway. Saturday night racing, 85 laps on the board. Tracy, this is going to be a heck of a race. Tell you what, it's going to be a different race than we've been watching here in the previous weeks, as there has been some new rules handed down for this game, for this series, and also for this track. So, never buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. That's right, folks. And remember, you're here with ETV Live. Don't forget to get over. It's easy to remember that site with etv-eplay.net. Join in on the chat, join in on the fan interactive page, and watch the race in high-quality streaming. I'm your host this evening, Rick the Law Dog Donathan, and joining me in the booth this evening is Tracy Flip Robinson, and on the cameras, John the Bad Boy Westland. So grab your popcorn and grab your Kool-Aid, kids. It's going to be a heck of a race tonight here out of turn four. And remember, you're with ETV Live, the leader in sim broadcasting, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, tell you what there, Rick, we got a going to have a good show tonight here with Veteran Sim Race. And, and I tell you what, we got a person going to step up and give us a hand with John to hand the cameras. That'll be Jerry the Corn Dog Wolf who'll be out there giving him a hand, getting our other set of crew with the cameras running tonight. But I tell you what, tell us about some information you found out about this site, Rick. Absolutely. I'm going to start off by going over the point standings here, Tracy. we got Ronnie Royal that's leading the points coming into the race here this evening. Um, and following behind him is Cecil Ring. Um, now, I did get a chance to talk to Ronnie, but I did get a chance to talk to Cecil earlier. And he said he's going to try to do what he can to keep his nose clean, hoping to finish in a top five, maybe top ten. But he also did tell me that Hellgate Gravemeyer is in the race tonight, and it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I tell you right now, Rick, running in third position for the points is that Hellgate Gravemeyer. He moved up five positions, and he's 150, got 151 points, only three points behind our leader. And running in fourth place right now is Seth DeMerchant, losing one spot from last week. He's got 150 points, and tell you what, we're working really hard to stay up there in that top five. That's right. And uh, in, a, in a fifth position, Brian Barden is coming in in fifth in points here this evening. And uh, I did get a chance to talk to him as well, ask him how his practice was going. He said he wasn't sure about some things. So didn't see some good things here at practice this evening. And uh, seen some bad moves from some drivers. And uh, he, things are a little on the edge this evening. So he's just going to keep his fingers crossed. But uh, right behind him in sixth position in the points is Ryan Newman. Yeah, I tell you what, in seventh position, down two spots is Craig T. Craig Nelson at the 126 points, 28 points behind their leader. And running in eighth position, down four spots is Craig White in that number three car. He's got 124 points, and he's 30 points behind our leader, Rick. That's right, and I'm going to tell you what, up ten positions, Ricky Jenkins with 116 points. He's 38 points behind the leader, so with a good race here today, he can close in. Running in behind him, up 12 points, Johnny States with 111 points, only 43 points behind the leader. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Rick, that'll take care of our top ten runners tonight, and I've been paying attention to qualifying happening right now. And as we sit right now, Ricky Jenkins is in the pole position with a 51.071. Well, I tell you that Ricky Jenkins is—I uh, tell you—he's he, a fast guy. He's—he's he's definitely a man to watch for. And uh, it looks like uh, Scott Hunsinger in practice—practice uh, practice time was a 47.501. So I'm not familiar with that name, but uh, that's a pretty good time, uh, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what—that's working with our new—the new system for the how the drafting work. It's more like what you see on television now, as far as the NASCAR. Two by two racing, get two cars together, you can really put down a pretty fast lap time, and the guys who can get hooked up the best are going to move to the front pretty fast. Not too sure how that's going to work out for our guys tonight, Rick. Right, and then third, we've got uh, Ronnie Royal, um, the leader in the points position there. Um, so it's definitely going to be a heck of a race. Um, let's get ready for our national anthem. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was That's a fantastic national anthem there, Tracy. It's awesome to hear that. It gives me cold chills every time I hear it. Did I tell you one of the best renditions of the national anthem out there, there Rick? Absolutely. And uh, let's go over our uh, qualifying here this evening. In top place this evening, looks like we've got the number 02, Ricky Jenkins starting with a 51.071, and on the outside is Thomas Romy with a 51.081, Tracy. And starting third night, the 55 of Ronnie Royal, starting outside of him, and fourth is the 03 of Hellgate Gravemeyer. And starting fifth in the number three, Craig White. Looks like he's got a new paint scheme here this evening. And right on the outside of him, starting sixth, the number 27, Joe Thompson. And starting in seventh, the 35 of Jason Orlando. And starting in eighth position, the 30 of Luke Olette. And in ninth, we have the number 12, Ryan Newman. And in tenth, the number six, Mike Costa. And starting in eleventh, will be the 67 of Eric Monsenbacher. And starting in twelfth, the two of Lee Dubraz. And in 13th, the number 31, Jason Inch. And in 14th, number 16, Brian Barden. Starting 15th, the 63 of Rodney Harris. Starting in 16th position, 34 of Scott Hussinger. And in 17th, the number 15, Mark Johnson. And 18th, number 33, Michael Hallett. And starting 19th, the 8 of Derek Puckett. And starting 20th, the double zero of Craig Nelson. And 21st position, we have the number 92, Jeremy Baysmore. And in 22nd position, number 18, Brogan Lott. And starting 23rd, it'd be the 23 of Cecil Green. And starting in 24th, the 91 of Barry Jacobs Jr. In 25th, we have the number 21, Bob Ingalls. And in 26th, the number 5, Fred Mawasanita. Starting 27th will be the 36th of Chuck Ingram. And starting in 28th, the 24th of Seth DeMerchant. And 29th, we have the number 41, E.J. Oric. And in 30th, the number 37, Steve Rosner. Starting 31st, the 32 of Rich Jett. And starting in 32nd, the 65 of Sean Brown. 33, we have the number 66, Patrick Willman. 34th, number 17, Edward Villardi. Oh, I got tongue twisted there, Tracy. The 35th edition, coming up the tail of the field, the 77 of Frank 
of Frank Buscini. Fantastic, Tracy. This is going to be an awesome race this evening. The pace car is off the field, and we're about to go green. Ricky Jenkins on that uh, pole spot there on the outside. Thomas Romy looking on the outside, right tucked in behind. Ricky green, green, green. Royal, right in Royal. And we have a green flag in there, and we're off to the races. Yeah, I tell you what, because the thing, see, the which two cars were out there practicing and working together to get that two car tandem working. And I tell you what, the right at this moment, I'm not seeing anybody really connecting up except for possibly those two lead cars. It looks like a typical restart here at Talladega already, Ricky. <laughs> yes, sir. It's not just roaming like he got left out in the cold, shut the door, and Ricky is off to the races. Uh, it looks like the uh, Thomas Romy got kind of stuck on the outside there, Tracy. He didn't get a good, uh, good, good lap coming off turn two there to get a good run, so he kind of got stuck out by himself out there. Yeah, I tell you, I'm like here watching uh, the six and the two car trying to get hooked up here, nose to tail, to get up to speed and get past the top group. But I tell you, if you're the guys in the back and to try to do that move, it's going to be pretty tough here early on. As we have a two wide up front, and it's going to be pretty hard to stay on your partner and try not to uh, get them loose out there, Rick. That's right. It looks like uh, Roaming got a little help coming up from Joe Thompson. Joe Thompson's help pushing that car. Oh, my goodness, what a run he got coming out of turn two there. Look at them go, Tracy. Look at them go. That just took a little time for a couple of people to get together. Our leaders did that for about a straight away. And it looks like we're going to have a, got a guy trying to take the lead up there. Looks like uh, Thomas Romig look, looking to take that lead. I know he loses the lead. And uh, we got a new leader up there, guys. I am sure can't tell the car that is. I believe that's going to be the 27. And Joe Thompson is actually going to lead that lap. And, Tracy, that's what's going to be interesting here today is uh, that new they have fixed the uh, the draft with these cars, and we're going to see some interesting things play out today. Uh, so get prepared for that. Oh yeah, and most definitely. I tell you what, like I said this new uh, aero package they have set up. I'm watching some cars moving on the outside, working to get around. They came back from a little ways back, and that's the six of Mike Costa and the two of Lee DeBras. They're working together. I tell you what, they came up to the front pretty quick. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, running the six right now, the 02, Ricky Jenkins, don't forget about him. He's a strong guy here. And running in behind him, Scott Hunsinger. Uh, so, but if you'll notice, Joe uh, Thompson and Luke Ouellette, they are, uh, I tell you, that, that, that new uh, model they came out with, they're running away with it. Yeah, I tell you, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at that front two cars. They're hooked up and moving out away from these guys. A lot of these guys are running the old style of drafting back here, just staying off each other here early. I'm not too sure how many people got to practice that new uh, drafting style. It might affect some of our normal front runners who possibly might not have got any practice doing that out there. As we're getting a couple packs of cars there, kind of pulling away from the group. Yeah, that's right. It looks like you've got the, uh, Tracy, it looks like you got the uh, six of Mike Costa. Uh, and in behind him, Lee Dubois, they're trying to get something going over there on that outside. Uh, it looks like the 34 is kind of joining in with them there. With, uh, my goodness, uh, it's Scott Hunsinger, he kind of trying to join in there behind him. Getting a good run coming out of that turn two there. Yeah, I tell you, the 06 and the 02 there just tried that. I uh, got a pretty good run, got away from the pack of Thomas Romig. And uh, just the... They got split up. One car moved high, broke up the draft. Now they're falling back to the, the group of cars back here, and the pack is kind of losing some time. But I tell you what, our lead two cars, Joe Thompson and Luke, Luke Ouellette, I tell you what, doing a great job up there. But I tell you, they're going to run out of time here because I can understand you could only do that push draft for so many laps before your car gets too hot. Yeah, and then uh, that's definitely something we're going to see uh, that's going to play a part here today at uh, Talladega Super Speedway. Uh, it looks like uh, looks like Joe's going to let Luke go ahead and go on by him, rest his engine a little bit, follow him behind him. I believe they've pulled away probably a good, oh gosh, probably a good 10 to 12 car leads there. 
Yeah, as I said, they're going to be they're sticking together like that, making lots of time, getting away from that lead group. We're able to make the switch and still not lose that much time. Now they're getting back together. Watch for them two cars to start pulling away again, and they'll have to make the switch again. I'm walking here watching the 24 and 41 cars. They're hooked up pretty good together right now. Probably just going to work on trying to get up to that lead group. That's right, Tracy, and uh, I tell you, you've still got, you know, we came in this race earlier today, and uh, thank goodness we got Jerry the Corn Dog Wolf with us today, helping us out with the cameras. Jerry made a statement about a lot of the channels that was made here, and I'm going to tell you, thinking about that now and seeing how this draft is working, I think what you're going to see is you, you're starting to see a lot of people starting to team up with each other, and they don't want to reveal them secrets out loud. No, I tell you what, that's where I said the practice is going to help you because uh, it's pretty hard to learn out here under race conditions of uh, what you need to do to draft with that person to gain maximum uh, utility from it. As the 24 and the 41 just broke up there and kind of lost. The 24 is falling back behind the 41. Must started getting hot and having to switch that position up, which you're going to see these guys do, which is going to cost them a little bit of time. But I tell you, we still got a pretty good pack running up there up front too, Rick. Absolutely, and I'm going to tell you, uh, Jerry, uh, Tracy, I'm sorry. You know, We had three wide going into turn one, and I think we're going to see a lot of that action here today with veteran sim racers. They are, a, they are a great group of guys to watch race, get some exciting things out of watching these guys race, and my heart is pumping 100 miles an hour right now. Yeah, but tell you what, you take a look at that lead two cars way out in front of this group. As a matter of fact, they're going to have to start together and they're going to have a hard time running them two cars down because I tell you what, it looks like they've pulled out a good 15 to 20 car lead, lead group. Absolutely, and you got the double zero, Craig Nelson, going into turn one, coming out of turn two. Uh, you got a good run, good smooth run coming out of there, and uh, that's going to be Mike Coast in, tucked in right in behind him, that outside sneaking on up beside him. Yeah, you look at it right now, the top two cars right now making the switch, putting uh, Joe Thompson back into the lead. But look at this distance they've made up on this group already running this way. They've got a 2.63 second, 39 second lead, something that you don't normally see here on Talladega, the races we had here before. Two cars couldn't want to run away from the pack as they are right now. And I tell you what, they just keep stretching that distance out each lap. Absolutely, and I tell you, that's what you call teamwork. Joe Thompson, Luke Olet working close together, side to side, bumper to bumper. Great action so far early here in the race, Tracy, and uh, I, you know, we've, we're only 10 laps into this 85 laps that's on the board. Uh, what do you expect to see here today? Well, I'll tell you what, right now we're just kind of feeling things out. So far it looks like a pretty decent race going on out there. A lot of guys still running on this normal draft, just kind of hanging in the group, riding around the track. You got a few cars out there, they're trying to get to the bumper of the guy in front of them and try to do that two-car tangle. Say the two cars doing that the best right now is Joe Thompson and Luke Olet. And uh, I'll tell you what, we just got two cars just got hooked up, and they're starting to pull away from that pack, and that's going to be the three of Craig White and the 35 of Jason Orlando. Good deal. And, you know, uh, I tell you, as I was looking at, looking at qualifying, Tracy, I noticed that Hellgate Gravemeyer, a uh, few guys uh, talked about him uh, during our pre-race interview. I was speaking to some of the guys, and uh, he is definitely a, an awesome racer here. A little worried about him right now. It looks like he's running 11 in the number of three car. Uh, three wide, going, getting ready to come across the start-finish line. Oh, goodness. Yeah, tell you what, they're still racing back here in this group. Pretty, uh, tied along, but I'm not too sure what happened with Craig White and the person he had pushing with him, because they got broke up, but they were just starting to pull away from the group. Now it looks like the three car and maybe the two car are going to, nope, the six car and the two car are trying to hook up now. Not too sure what happened to Craig White and his dance partner, but they were just starting to pull away, and for some reason they just split apart, and uh, 
There they are back in the pack with our lead two card with a four and a half second lead, Rick. And that's what I was about to say, Tracy. Watching Joe Thompson, Luke Olette, uh, the next guy behind them, Mike Costa, running 4.667 seconds behind those guys. And, uh, wow, I, I've never seen anyone take a lead uh, this far yet. So, uh, But, again, VeteranSimRacing.com, uh, Veteran Sim Racing. there's a lot of things you won't see. These guys are Class A drivers, very professional, great teamwork, uh, great group of guys, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you, doing a great job. Say we got a got a few people down in the chat we'd like to say hi to. Look like we got uh, Bundy Bear down there in the chat room. And Derek's dad, Tony, and uh, see Hunter Combs down there, and James S. is in our chat room. Uh, good evening, guys, and uh, hope you're enjoying the race. Fantastic, Ken Tracy. That's going to be Derek Puckett's father, and we're always glad to see him in here. Um, but again, uh, like I say, looking at Luke and Joe Thompson running away from this uh, this pack here. Um, got the number six Mike Costa running leading that pack in behind him with Lee DeBaris. Yeah I tell you what the group back here unless some caution comes out right now I'll tell you what's running pretty clean and green as we're on lap 14. I'll tell you what that lead two cars are just pretty much saying uh we'll talk to you guys later you guys have fun running in your pack we're just going to go out here and uh see how far we can get away from you before that first uh, pit stop is needed under green and at the rate they're moving right now boy they tell you what they're going to have a half lap on this guys <laughs> that's right Tracy and uh, d definitely the ball is in the air no one knows how this race is going to turn out uh, especially with the new build that just came out oh we got a we got an accident the yellow flag is out number six Helge uh, Mike Costa oh my goodness we got a big pile up Oh yeah, I tell you what, got a car get loose up there, and uh, in front of that group, unfortunately, they were going three wide, entering the corners. I don't think that he saw him there when they went in, but I'll tell you what caused a big mess. Absolutely, and uh, just trying to take a look back at a few things. Looks like you got the uh, six of Mike Costa involved, uh, 18 of Brogan Law, uh, possibly Ryan Newman. Let's check with Jerry and see if Jerry's got anything for us. Jerry. I'm going to tell you what, I got her pulled up here, Mr. Donathan. It looks like it might have been that. Oh, no, guys, I believe it was a car in front of that 12 that actually came down there. Got into the side of a couple cars, spun them around, but the 12 is definitely going to take a lot of damage out of that with a bunch of other cars. It's going to be a tough break for a lot of these guys. They're going to have to get them in there and get some sheet metal straight back out if they plan to get these things going right. Yeah, I tell you what, Jerry, I was looking back at that, and uh looked like that 03 of Helgate Gravemeyer moved down and caught the front end of that six car which uh the 12 was low had nothing to the two car had nothing to do with that and they come across his nose and just turned the six in front of everybody tell you what a lot of cars pile into that crash I mean, a lot of a lot of sheet metal being straightened out the 35 he just caught a, just a small amount of it i'm trying to catch all the cars there looks like the eight, 18 involved the 12s involved the 16s involved Tell you what, a lot of bent up sheet metal, 63 is involved. Tell you what, a lot early in the race, a lot of bent up sheet metal going around out there, Rick. That's right, Tracy, and uh, that's going to change things for those two up front, uh, Joe Thompson and Luke Olette, that uh, took off and ran away with this thing. Uh, so that's going to bring, it's going to reel them back into that crowd there, and uh, the secret's going to be out. They, a lot of people are going to realize, hey, these two guys are working together. We've got to do something to get in between them, keep them with us, keep them with the pack, uh, and stay in the race, especially early in the game like this. So, but uh, while we're we're under caution here, Tracy, let's step back, we'll go back to the famous, like JD likes to call it, the uh, buffet bar, and take a few moments. You guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hey dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and Bone Rattling, Skull Crushing, Rock and Roll on Hard Driving Radio. And partnered with Nuff World Simulation Gaming, check out the HD Radio Network's Nuff Radio with Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. All right, guys, and welcome back to ETV Live. You're watching the best in sim broadcasting, and uh, looks like. Hellgate Gravemire just went into the pits, but uh, I want to take a few moments to uh, HD Radio Network. Get your rock on, kids. Thank you to HD Radio for our pre-race entertainment for ETV Live. Thank you, Philip, and thank you, Ed. Get on over to HDRadioNetwork.com. Get your rock on. It's skull crushing. All right, and uh, Tracy, it looks like we've got Ronnie Royal at the uh, top of the leaderboard here with Joe Thompson running in behind him and in third place, Luke Olette. Yeah, I tell you, I'm not sure. It looked like most of the guys probably came in, got tires and fuel just so to stretch out that run here a little bit. But yeah, Ronnie Royal up top, John, Joe Thompson, and looks like the 30 of Luke Olette getting in third position. So he'll be right behind that 55 of Ronnie Royal to push him. As we know, Luke was running out there doing the two-car tandem with the 27 car here, that full first section. Joe Thompson, who's going to start in second position, will be on that outside lane to him. So it should be interesting to see who Luke connect, hooks up with on this restart. Well, you know, the two top runners was Joe Thompson and Luke Olette. And uh, with Joe being on that outside, I believe Luke Olette's going to start in behind Ronnie Royal. So I'm looking to see that when the green drops, I'm looking to see Luke probably try to follow on out that outside line and get in behind Joe to get a run on Ronnie coming out of two. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. What do you think, Tracy? Well, like I said, it's kind of hard, hard to say because he'll be able to hook up right away with Ronnie Royal. And all those two cars have worked together before. You know, at this point of the race, it's early. I'm sure you're going to want to make a lot of friends out there, and uh, the more friends you have, the better your chances there at the end. That's right, and uh, let's don't forget about Craig White and Ricky Jenkins. Now, those guys have been working pretty close with each other here this evening as well, and it uh, looks like uh, Craig White is going to be starting out in that fifth position in that number three machine, and uh, Ricky Jenkins, I believe he's going to be on the inside, so uh, going, to, going to be interesting to see who's going to let who lead and tuck in behind who, but uh, we'll We'll see here in just a few moments. Yeah, it looks like they're starting to line up. We'll be taking the restart as we'll have 20 laps in out of an 85 lap race, 65 laps to go. And we know all the craziness will start happening right around lap 65 with 25, with 20 laps to go. Tell you what, I want to know how many of these guys in this group, seeing what those two cars did, are going to try it themselves. Because I can tell, tell you what, this track, you can't let somebody get that far out in front of you, Rick. Oh, absolutely not, and especially with this new build that they've got, uh, you know, again, that was the the biggest lead that I've seen run with this series here, and uh, I tell you, it's going to be interesting. I know these guys are going to want to try to keep everything kind of grouped up, not let anybody run away from this thing, so. Yeah, I tell you what, they need to throw out what they knew, because there's something new. Time to get rid of that old style of drafting out there, because it ain't going to work anymore. Especially if you got two cars that have been practicing, getting that two-car tango to work out there is the two, uh, 27 of Joe Thompson and uh, the 30 of Luke Olette showed everybody how to do it. Now it's for everybody to figure it out and do it right. That's right, Tracy. And uh, lights are out in the pace car, and they're in down into turn three. And looking over at our ETV interactive page over here in the chat room. Folks, we've got a special for you. We're getting ready to go green, and when you get ready to see this green flag drop, turn them speakers up, and we're going to crank it up. 
You know, I want to I, I want to hear your speakers coming through my monitor. Tell you what, these guys are getting ready. The pace cars getting pretty close to heading down into the pit road as he's head down there. These guys are gonna be coming around, hit, come up, pick up the green flag, and tell you what, they'll be crank up your stereo system, your headphones, or your stereo systems, and then get ready to go race to the green flag. Green out. flag, green flag. And here we go, guys. Green flag is out. Crank it up. Yellow flag is out. All right, folks. Like we got a caution here, and uh, re rewind this and see what happened. Uh, Tracy, you got anything on this yet? No, I was. And I didn't see nothing come out here. Looks like everybody's still running at full speed. Uh, possibly we might have had an accident and bring the car. So I see the lights blinking. I'll have to start rewinding and take a look there, guys. Alrighty. Well, again, it looks like we've still got a green flag. Uh, we're still racing. It looks like Joe Tom and Luke Olet. Okay, and finally we've got a yellow flag out. And Joe Thompson and Luke Olet running in that top two up there. Again, Tracy with Ronnie Royal uh, right in behind them. Yeah, I tell you what, they got hooked up, but Kasha came out pretty quick there, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna try to. Looks like, uh, looks like on the start off there, like I said, Tracy, uh, Luke Olet, Joe Thompson hooked up with each other, got into that draft, and uh, right before start finish line, looked like Joe Thompson, Luke Olet got back up in that number one and number two spot. So those guys are definitely the two to be watching here today. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, they know how to work that new draft. And I'll tell you what, they're the first ones to get hooked up each and every time. So keep an eye on them every restart because I'll tell you what, they're going to show these boys how to get around the track. Absolutely. And the uh, lights are on on the pace car, that Monte Carlo. Um you know, I wanted to say I talked to, uh, uh, didn't get a chance to talk to Ronnie Royal. I tried to get with him, and I believe he got here a little late, and uh, definitely running first in the points here this evening, and would love to see uh, see how he thinks out there. Maybe we can get an in-car chat with him here in just a few. Folks, it looks like we may be having some technical difficulty uh, with uh, Ronnie Royal's machine out there. And uh, let's see what we can do to uh, maybe talk to uh, Joe Thompson. Let's uh, see if we can get Joe Thompson on the radio. i tell you what, I was looking back. They're trying to find what brought up the yellow flag. Not too sure what it is. But when I was watching, I think there's quite a few cars had to hit pit road for something. Don't know if. Maybe this is thrown out. They seen something. Maybe some oil down the track. Uh, got the caution out. I seen about eight cars there in the pit road there, Rich. Fantastic. Rick? Well, uh, Joe Thompson, this is Rick with ETV Live. Uh, have you got a copy? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Fantastic. Looks like you and Luke Olet's working pretty good with each other out there. Uh, 
had almost a four and a half second lead on the field earlier before the cautions came out. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Luke and I worked well in practice earlier today, and uh, this is my first race with this series, and uh, so we're just trying to stay together. Fantastic. Got the uh, teamwork going on today with Luke. Uh, any uh, any sponsors or anybody you'd like to think out there? Well, we got you on uh, ETV Live. Yeah, I'd just like to thank Luke uh, for working with me and, uh, you know, uh, getting me in the series because uh, this is, like I said, first one I've had. Fantastic. Well, Joe, we wish you the very best of luck and uh, see what you do and see how you end up out there. And uh, good luck to you, buddy. All right. Thank you, guys. Joe Thompson, guys, running in the number one, mach number one spot with the number 27, Joe Thompson, and right behind him in second, number 30, Luke Olette, and in third, number 55, Ronnie Royal. Tracy, tell us a little bit about Craig Nelson and Ricky Jenkins. Yeah, I tell you what I do in tech, I found out that we had debris on the track, brought that caution out, guys, and I tell you what, look like they said, we haven't seen anybody else besides those two cars hook up yet out there Rick so we're not real sure what the rest of these group of cars are going to do as we're turning on lap 22 so long ways going the race but like I said if we can get out there and they run a green flag from this point on and if those two cars have, uh, get hooked back up get that big of a lead I don't think two cars can run them down after they get that far out I think if you're going to have any chance with them you're going to have to be in that two car draft the same team they are and just kind of have to, I guess, run back and forth on each other. I'm not too sure how this is going to work out if you have two groups of cars like that. If one maybe have a little more speed than the front group to get up beside them or not, we'll have to wait and see. Fantastic. And uh, notice the uh, Hellgate Gravemeyer up in that eighth spot there. He's moved up uh, a couple positions from the previous caution that we had. And uh, don't want to forget about Cecil Ring. I believe Cecil is running second in the points. And uh, not quite sure where, let's see, where he uh, qualified at, Tracy. Tracy, it looks like he qualified in 23rd position. And uh, right now he's running in about 16th. So maybe, uh, maybe he's kind of sitting back here, being a little patient. Uh, it's understandable, especially with this new draft we got going. Yeah, I tell you what, you really don't want to be waiting too much at all in this. I mean, it's, if you're sitting back there waiting, you're pretty much setting your own fate to be in the back group, not to run up front and take the win with the two cars hooking up. And I'm taking a look down our list here, see how many cars that have uh, fallen a lap back, our first car lap down right now is at 67 of Eric Monsenbacher. He'll be your lucky dog on the next caution to get a move back around the field and back on our lead lap. And I tell you what, we're going to have a little battle right there for that position as uh, Mark Johnston in the number 15 is also one lap down. And the 25, and 25th place, uh, 35 of Jason Orlando, he'll be your other car one lap down. So those are three guys going to be wor working hard to get to that lucky dog position. Absolutely. And then 26, the number 32 of Rich Jett. And in 27, the number 12 of Ryan Newman. Uh, I know he got involved in that earlier accident. Uh, and I believe the 28th position, number 16, Brian Barden, was involved in the accident as well. Yeah, that big accident really, really caught a lot of cars. And I tell you, the, I have to believe the 37 of Steve Rosner was probably uh, out of that race pretty early. It's 16 laps down. And your 32nd place car, the 18 of Brogan Lott, caught up in that big accident too. we got like three cars and nine laps down right now. So those guys are either just trying to limp it around, try to get as many points as they can, or they've parked them and their crew chief still working on them, haven't called it quits yet, but, you know, it's a long race to go. Absolutely, and, you know, uh, that's what I've seen a lot of these guys. It uh, doesn't matter how many laps they're down. They're, they, they get these cars in the pits, and they work on those things, and they do what they can to finish the race uh, because points is everything. Whether you finish first or whether you finish last on a bad day at the racetrack or being involved in an accident, it's important to get those points because you don't know when or what time of the year it's really going to matter uh, whether you finish uh, at dead last place or six laps down from a race. So real important to finish the race. Now our pace car is coming around in turn four, so we'll be getting under green here in just a few moments, Tracy. 
Yeah, we got everybody lined up, and I heard some talk in between two. First, some talk between two spotters trying to get their drivers to hook up here on this restart to get going right away, guys. Absolutely. And you got Joe Thompson and Luke Olette, one and two spot with Ronnie Royal running third. It's going to be interesting to see how they get off on the start this evening. Uh, look for Joe and Luke to be working together. As uh, Joe said earlier, uh, him and uh, Luke Olette was working really close with each other, and they have so uh, been since practice. So here we go. We're about to go green. We're 25 laps in. Let's see how it rumbles. Green flag, green flag. They take the green flag. Looks like that 27 car gets a good jump. I'll tell you what, he's just waiting for that 30 car of Luke Olette to get behind him. Get those two cars hooked up and tell you what, they're not too far from it. Say they got one car right behind them in third spot there. The 55 of Ronnie Royal trying to hang with those two, but what I'm understand, once those two cars get hooked up, they'll just drive away from them there, Rick. Absolutely, and I noticed on the start there, Luke Olitt, uh and Joe got a very good start. Luke Olitt slipped right in behind Joe Thompson, almost like Ronnie Royal was almost letting him on in there. Uh, Ronnie was probably just wants to take off and try to run with these boys, run away with them. He, he knows what they're capable of doing. But there they go. Uh, they already opened up a about a four-car length already so far, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you, they got hooked up quick, and they're moving away. They're getting a few more shout-outs down in our chat room. Looks like the Brogan, the number 18, he's down in our chat room. And also we've got a new couple other people. Harold, Harold Lowry, he's down in our chat room hanging out with the guys. And also Rusty, a person I know from Rusty, ran, ran, ran with him before, another race series. And Matthew Largent, he's also down in our chat room right now, Rick. Fantastic. And we definitely want to give a shout out to Harold Lowry with the Talladega Super Speedway race here this evening. Veteran sim racer. So, Har Har Harold, we really appreciate that. And John, got a few words? Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Harold Laurie. He's been kind of feeling under the weather. I believe his back's uh, ailing him a little bit. Just want to give a shout out to him. Hope he's feeling better, uh, guys up there. Take it back up, Rick. Uh, John, John, you think I can give a shout out? My back's hurt from carrying JD around all the time, so I, I just need a little shout out. If you could. That might be the same thing. Uh, maybe it's contagious. Maybe it's JD's fault. <laughs> 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 and there it is from bad boy John Westland, yes sir. And uh, if we get back out on the track here, it looks like your double zero of Craig Nelson and uh, looks like Craig White, they're working that outside line. It may be working for them. They've obviously got back on the inside they're trying to get in with that draft with Joe Thompson and Luke, Luke Olette. Uh, we've got a couple more that's fell in back there. Uh, behind with Ronnie Royals fell back. Oh, and we've got Craig Nelson and Craig White looking on the outside in turn two. Tracy? Yeah, I tell you what, getting pretty wild there. Them two cars got hooked up. That zero and that three car were working that draft. Look like this. There's actually three sets of car now working on that draft. The other set is the 55 of Ronnie Royal and the 02 of Ricky Jenkins. Tell you what, them boys have got it figured out able to catch up with the other two cars and stay with them i tell you what that double zero is going to take the lead and i tell you what our new leader now is going to be that craig nelson being pushed by craig white tell you oh they got broken up tell you what this ain't like the old racing where you just dive in front of those other guys you've got to stay with your partner otherwise you're just going to lose so much speed by doing as they do and they're not going to reach the start finish line with the lead looks like rick that's right. It looks like we're getting ready to open it three wide coming out of turn two with Ronnie Royal and Ricky Jenkins on the far outside. Holy moly, we have got a race. That's something that has just struck fire into these guys, and uh, they've all decided they want to take off and leave like a rocket, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, I, they did a great job getting those cars getting together to figure it out. Looks like we got the top group going to be making a switch, which is really going to change how this is working as it looks like that double zero trying to find a way around the 30 car almost having an accident with the amount of speed difference that they have. As we got the top two cars about rubbing down the front straightaway as the 30 is getting pushed by that 27, just about got bumped by that the double zero of Craig Nelson. 
Oh, and Greg White, look at that on the inside, down on the bottom apron, snuck up in right behind Craig Milson. Uh, boy, oh boy, how exciting it can be, I tell you. And then you've got the number 91, uh, Barry Jacobs, Jr. He's just come out of nowhere, Tracy, and he is, right now, he looks like he's running, uh, looks like he's running seventh place. Yeah, those guys are doing a great job up there. Luke Olette and uh, Joe Thompson got her hooked back up together again and got back out front and got them cars tied up. And now Craig Nelson and Craig White are hooked up. They're going to be pushing toward the front. And it looks like we got the 91 of Barry Jacobs and also looks like the 92 of Jeremy Bazemore working together. They're coming forward to that top group pushing each other. It looks like the double zero. Yellow flag is out. Uh, we've got an accident in turn two. We got several cars involved in the accident, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm backing up, taking a look at it here. Big, big crash. Bunch of cars got tangled up. It's going to be that 03 of Hellgate Gravemeyer getting into the 77. Oh man, and that is very upsetting for uh, Hellmeyer uh, and got. The number 23 car. About to check with Jerry, see if Jerry's got anything on this. Jerry, have you got anything? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm taking a look at this, guys, and actually, I don't believe it was Hellgate Gravemeyer that started this. I think it was at number 77 of Frank Buschini. Got a loose, little loose up in front of him, and Hellgate Gravemeyer really had nowhere to go, guys. He just kind of was there and kind of gave him the spin around and nothing else he could do, but a lot, of, a lot more damaged race cars here. That indeed, we've got several race cars that are crashed up and uh, going back and looking at the replay looks like the O number nine uh, Thomas Roaming boy he took a ride up on top of that wall there and uh, hopefully they'll get him checked out in the infield make sure he's okay yeah, I was watching the 23 car Cecil Reen really took a beating in that one he got hit while he was spinning down the bottom sent him spinning like a top got him up on Two wheels, that car heavily damaged. Well, and I'm uh, going back and looking at the replay. We like we had a few problems there. Uh, got any more information? Uh, it looks like the 77 got into Luke Olet down here in turn uh, one and two. Yeah, not too sure what's going on. Luke Olet's way up there toward the front. Not too sure how them two would have got together unless uh, some reason he was just coming around them to lap them. I'm not too sure, Rick. Right. Well, uh, don't see any damage on Luke's car there. Looks like we've got uh, Luke Olet in the number one, one spot for right now, driving the number 30 machine. And in second, 20, number 27, Joe Thompson. Those guys have really worked well together, but I'm going to tell you what, that number three, Craig White, he's coming, my friend. He is coming. Him and Craig Nelson's been working together, and uh, they're working that outside, the inside, the downside, the outside. My goodness, they are working and driving that car, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, looks I love how many people have figured out that two-car tandem now. It looks like we had four pairs of cars, set the cars, all working that. Uh, two-car tandem. They're doing a great job. Haven't seen too many incidents. I tell you what, made a re it was really close there, though, when they were doing the switch around and uh, got they almost got then they got caught up and into it, but they was, everybody out front doing a great job. Just had a few little inches in the back, but uh, everybody doing great, Rick. Absolutely, and a great race we're seeing here today. Hey, listen, Tracy, I want to tell you about MTCO.com Game Servers. Jerry Wolf is the man to contact with $49 a month, no contract, no setup fees, and dedicated servers. Get over there and sign up and don't get left behind. Remember, MTCO.com. Got to get over there, Tracy, and check those guys out. Tell you what, I've been around MTCO servers here for about the last three to four years always been stable always been great servers tell you what I, if I was setting up a league that's the servers I'd be using because you don't have to worry about the ser the servers falling down on you at MTCO absolutely I heard nothing but great things about those folks over there and uh, 
uh, give a great shout out for Mr. Jerry Wolf over there that runs that outfit, uh, A class, I understand. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get quite a few cars going to come in here at the pit road. But tell you what, it won't be our lead. Looks like about six cars. They're not going to be hitting the pit road. They're going to stay out there, run a little longer before they have to pit. I tell you, I kind of think here we are on lap 34. I tell you, it is a little early for these guys. But sometimes you makes you wonder if you should just go in there just to have that little buffer there. Absolutely. And uh, if you take a look at the number 66 machine, uh, boy, I tell you what, it takes skill to drive a, to drive a car that way. I'm gonna tell you, that man is going sideways down the track. I think what he was trying to do was get out of the pit so we wouldn't get lapped. And uh, you probably see him go back in the pits here in just a moment, Tracy. But a uh, shout out to that young man there. Boy, he can drive that car sideways and go straight at the same time. Yeah, tell you, you got the wheel turned so far to the left. Don't you know how you drive them? I don't even know how you even continue to steer left when you're that, that far sideways. You figure you're getting pretty close to that steering lock stopping you, Rick. <laughs> Absolutely. Man's driving 165 mile an hour around the track like that. I tell you, it, again, veteran sim racers, uh, folks need to check them out, check out the website, see how you can get involved and be a part of this group over here. Uh, but uh, until then, let's take a break just for a second. You guys don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back and uh, see you soon. All right, guys, and welcome back to Talladega Speedway. And I'm going to tell you, you have seen some action-packed racing here today with lots of guys that are working close to each other. You see some guys teaming up with each other. And uh, we've seen a complete race here today, Tracy, with some of these guys that are running that two-car draft and running away with the race. As we go farther into this race, too, Rick, more guys are figuring it out. It's going to be interesting to see if this time, since we did have four pairs last time, maybe we can get that fifth and sixth pair out there. And uh, I'm not too sure what them guys are going to do when you're going to be leading having to do the switch with that big a pack of cars behind you because you lose so much speed. It's going to be quite interesting to see if all the groups can stay together, if that's going to kind of break them up. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, remember, guys, HD Radio Network. Get your rock on, kids. I want to thank uh, HD Radio for our pre-race entertainment for ETV Live. And a big shout out and thanks to Philip Faults over there and Ed Wilson. Get on over to HDRadioNetwork.com and get your rock on. It's skull crushing. And Trace, we're getting ready to go green again. Lights are out on the pace car. We're about to start into the 37th lap of the full 85 laps that we have here today and uh, going to be interesting to see uh, you got Craig White and Craig Nelson up there just looking at Luke and Joe and uh, we're off to the races folks green flag green flag, is green out. flag. <laughs> it's 
see the uh, double zero Craig Nelson there move right in behind Craig White. Uh, looks like uh, Tracy, we got uh, the 27 of Joe Thompson kind of stuck out there by himself on that outside coming out of turn two. But he catches in with Luke Oled and behind Luke didn't leave him outside to, out, on the outside to dry. And they've hooked up and uh, they're taking off, Tracy. Okay, and now we're down into turn three, guys. And it looks like uh, looks like Craig White is on that down apron over there. Little help with uh, Craig Nelson, side by side, bumper to bumper action here. Talladega Super Speedway, folks. It yeah, Rick, like and it seems like it takes a little while for these guys to get cranked up in the two by two by two here, but you can see them starting to form already. The double zero in the three car hooked up, and they're getting ready to go three wide, Rick. Absolutely, three wide in turn one. It looks like we've got the car 33, which is driven by Michael Hallett. And uh, couldn't catch that other car there, John. Yeah, there's a foreman. There's about four packs here, actually. Getting ready to form five packs of two by two here. And uh, we're noticing the speeds are pretty much equal when they get side by side. But to get that third car tucked behind them, and I heard from Chuck Ingram, they lose about 10 miles an hour. So uh, we're, we're three wide here, two by two. That's right. And that 24 on the outside, Seth DeMerchant. And in behind him, EJ Oric. He is helping out Seth. They've got a good line on that outside. And uh, boy, oh boy, what a race we have got side by side here, guys. Three wide again in turn one. And uh, looks like, uh, looks like, looks like Luke Olet is uh, kind of falling back there, but he's still got a little help from Thompson. Craig you bet, Rick, and uh, I'll tell you what, I'll step in here for a little bit and cover for uh, Tracy. Tracy having a little bit of electrical problems. Watching the action up in front here, Rodney Harris in a number 63 car. I'll tell you what, uh, looking to move that thing forward. In the meantime, almost going three wide up here in front, trying to get hooked up two by two up here. But uh, I'll tell you what, your leaders uh, are working on uh, checking out here. Yeah, that's right, J.D. and uh, Craig White and Seth, the merchant, uh running uh, about the third or fourth position, but it's going to look like Craig White and Craig Nelson led that lap. They won that battle, but the war is not over with. With the uh, number 33 of Michael Halley closing in on the back of Craig Nelson. Uh, those guys are looking good out there. Uh, so it looks like Luke Olette and Thompson still running together on that outside out there. Uh, still making things happen down in the turn three. Tracy, it's good to have you back. I understand you had some technical difficulty here. You did some good action-packed racing there for a second. We missed you while you was gone. Yeah, I tell you what, I was just getting ready to have a talk with you when all of a sudden I smelled smoke in the background there, and I had to go see because my mic cut out and everything, and uh looked like we burned out one of the tubes on the, the old system we got there, but luckily I was able to find a nether box laying by us. I pulled the tube out of that. I hope it didn't affect nobody else, but I got mine back up and running. Absolutely, and it looks like Craig White and Craig Nelson. Uh, it looks like Craig Nelson went on the outside out there to help out Craig White, and Craig White fell in right behind Craig Nelson. And uh, you know, talking about that smoke, let me let me throw this at you, Tracy. Now I talked to JD a little earlier, and uh, he was cooking something on the rotisserie, so we might have something special back there on that buffet table a little later for us. Oh, that might be what blew out my my little tube there, that extra power he's drawn. <laughs> That's right. Boy, we got a race here today, folks, and I uh, want to give a good shout-out for some of our fans over here at ETV Live. We appreciate you guys being here with us this evening. It's always great to see you guys here, and uh, we hope you enjoy the show we've got here today for you. Great racing at the uh, Howard Lowry Speedway Super Speedway Series. And uh, special thanks to him for putting this show on. I'm trying to look at the fun group here. Nobody's really kind of hooked up together. It looks like the double zero and the three are just about to get hooked back together. For some reason, the double zero kind of dives low to get behind them. It's like it's a 24 car. But uh, the 30 and 27 working what they can, trying to get hooked back together. Got the 55 and the 02 and the 92, 91. 
Got all these guys working as a group out there. And tell you, new leader out there is at 21. Looks like Bob uh, Ingalls in that second group of the 34. And our leader, the 33 of Michael Howlett and the 63 of Rodney Harris. So they're our next group. So people have figured out this uh, drafting we got right now. Absolutely. And uh, uh, Tracy, I, Michael Howlett and Rodney Harris, they're, they're working together real quick. And I'm going to tell you, they're pulling away. Uh, Bob Ingalls and Scott Hunsinger, they're working together as well. And on the outside of them, you've got Craig Nelson and Craig White that's working together. I tell you, I would love just to hear what the chatter is going on in these guys' cars. I am sure there's a lot of things being said and what to watch out for and where we're going and when we're going to do it. Uh, the suspense is here this evening at Talladega. Uh, oh, it looks like uh, Michael Halleck got a little low on that apron there. It's going to throw a car a little sideways. Yeah, it looks like the top two guys are looking to make that exchange. And while the double zero and the three really getting, pushing them hard, about got them loose as he switched lanes from behind that 33 car. Look how fast those two cars dropped back to the group. And now that three and double zero kind of got separated. But watch out on that outside, the 91 and 92 got ahead of the steam. And boy, I tell you what, they zipped right around them like they were standing still there for a second. That's right. I tell you, uh, Michael Hallett and Rodney Harris uh, got into a little race there on the back stretch and uh, getting side by side. And uh, of course, that's where uh, Craig Nelson and uh, Craig White moved in upon them. Uh, you know, when they. These guys are racing up there side to side. They're, they're losing draft. They're slowing down. It's like hitting a brick wall. Those guys about come up on them before turn three and run all over them, uh, Tracy. Yeah, that's part of the new setup. That they've actually run a little smaller radiator out here with a smaller pressure cap. So you're going to watch two guys work together, push for quite a while. Looks like they're getting around three or four laps. The car's going to start getting hot. And if you tell you what, one thing you can't do is get these engines hot because they will not cool off very fast so you'll see these guys switching positions and during that that's when you got to do it cleanly and as fast as you possibly can to lose a little speed but those two guys the 91 to 92 during their swap they lost quite a bit of time yeah and i was watching michael hallett there it looks like he uh threw out the old fishing rod and hooked on to the back of uh Poulette's car there didn't want to get him let him get too far away uh, reeled him on in and tried to stay on that back bumper, but uh, you got the 27 of Joe Thompson. Oh, we got three wide in the turn three. Oh, and coming out of turn four, it comes down to two wide with Luke Olet out front and Michael Hallett battling for the lead with Luke Olet. Joe Thompson fighting hard to save it behind that 30 car. Oh, it looks like he about got into the three car really close, trying to move up, stay behind the 30. And give him a push around because we've seen that team get together and work really well. But that 33 car at the bottom, Michael Howlett's going to get some help from Jeremy Bazemore. He's going to give and try and give the 33 a push and work their way up. It looks like the teams are starting to separate out here a little bit, guys. As the this 92 and 91 are working together. Now he's working with the 33. Well, Tracy, as you can see, we've got a we've got a group of guys now working together staying together uh, don't see anybody really pulling away now it looks like the 92 and the 33 are starting to work together Jeremy Baysmore and uh, it looks like Michael Hallett kind of trying to team up there uh, with the 91 on the back door Barry Jacobs Jr. so uh, down in the turn three side by side and uh, good racing guys good racing 92 looking on the outside of Hallett good run yeah. coming off yeah, I think that 92 is trying to find a hole to get around the 33. I think he wants to work with the 91 as much as possible. But right now he's kind of stuck behind the 33, kind of waiting for the moment. But I tell you, that 30 and 27 kind of got hooked up, started moving away. As you can see, they lost a little bit of gap there, falling way back. Just that split second, even with the three-car back next to them, they lost quite a bit of time. The 92 going to the outside of... of Howlett and the 91 following them, trying to push them two cars away from the group. Absolutely, and you got Luke Olette and uh, Joe Thompson following right in behind them on the outside out there. Uh, 
looks like the 33 of uh, Michael Hallett lost a little bit of uh, a little bit of place there uh, with the opening of uh, about a four, maybe five, maybe even a five car lead. Those guys took off from him, so you got to act fast and got to know what's getting ready to happen right in front of you. Yeah, I see the 30 and 27 making the swap, trying to cool their cars off. But I tell you, the two cars that got out front, 92 and the 91, looks like Dave Foster made a car switch already. That puts Barry Jacobs Jr. in the lead, being pushed by the 92 of Jeremy Bazemore. I tell you, those two guys doing a great job. The three of Craig White and the double zero Craig Nelson doing the best they can to get hooked up. Looks like that 30 and 27 have got it done. They're starting to pull on the bottom lane away from them guys. Absolutely. And Barry Jacobs... Make it Barry Jacobs running the number nine, 91 machine and the number 92 machine, Jeremy Baysmore. Those guys working together, uh, bumper to bumper, not racing with each other, but just working together to uh, form out a lead there. Looks like they got a 0 0.58 tenths of a second in front of, uh, in front of Craig White. Yeah, I've been watching 27.30. I'm not too sure. Oh, the three's got to turn sideways. Big crash on the front straight. Double zero. The then flag the is out. So I'll tell you guys, a big crash on the front straight with our lead group. Oh, man, I'll tell you. And uh, Tracy, those guys are working. Oh, then the leader just took out. Oh, man. That's, the whole front back is gone, guys. The leader actually came down and clobbered the top three cars after about the fifth to tenth spot got clobbered. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna oh, tell you what, wow. uh, Tracy. There is going to be uh, wrenches being slung in the garage here in just a few moments. So we're gonna give Jerry Wolf a few minutes to catch up and to see what we've got. Jerry, what have you got for us there, buddy? I'm gonna tell you what, guys. I actually believe the double zero might have been at fault for that. I think he got into the back of the car in front of him. That's what turned him around. I honestly believe that this one might go back to the double zero, guys. We're gonna pull this back, take a second look at this again. But I believe he actually got into the it looks like he might have got into the back of Craig White. Yeah, I'm telling you, John, I think he got in the back of Craig White and turned him around in a lot of wrecked race cars at the front, bud. Well, there it is. Uh, Jerry Wolf there uh, with the camera and a replay. Definitely looks like uh, looks like the double zero got into the back of Craig White. That would be Craig Nelson. Um, and those guys have been working really good with each other today, Jer uh, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, it looked like you were looking at the lead group, the actual two lead cars of that 91-92. They had a few seconds on that pack, and good thing they did. Uh, I tell you what, crashing the front group, getting in a crash like that, can re really brings a lot more guys into it, and I'm not too sure how many cars we got left that aren't damaged, guys. Absolutely, and uh, maybe we can see if uh, maybe Craig White or maybe Joe Thompson would talk to us in the booth here we, maybe we can track them down but uh, looks like right now we got Barry Jacobs and uh, Jerry Baysmore running in the top one and two spot there with Scott Hunsunger running the number 34 machine and followed in behind on the outside of him with Jason Inch driving a 31 J, uh, Tracy yeah I tell you, tell you this, la this uh, race is getting turned upside down as we are now 51 laps into a 34 laps ago this part passes our finish line. We'll be down to 33 laps. But I tell you, a lot of the good cars smashed, crashed up into this in this race. Not too sure how this is all going to turn out as far as drafting goes. But I tell you, it helps quite a few cars. Scott Hunsinger is on 34 is at the third, and the 31 of Jason Inch made up to fourth, guys. Absolutely. And uh, Tracy, I got Craig White on the radio. And Craig, man, you run an outstanding race out there. You and uh, it looked like Craig Nelson have been working together out. What happened? Yeah, ten four, really, really fun. Uh, me and Craig were tight. Uh, I guess I must have come down into him. That's, uh, I guess that's what happened. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, it's no problem, Craig. We just hate that you had a little bad luck there. Um, looks like you're running eighth in the points. Uh, don't know how much that's going to affect you here today, but I know it's not going to be good for you. But uh, you did have a good race. Uh, think you guys can get that car repaired and get back out there? Oh, yeah, we're going to bang our hammers. 
Fantastic. Well, folks, there it is. Craig White. Craig, we wish you the very best of luck, buddy. Thank you. Uh, tough look, tough look uh, there, Tracy, for Craig. And it uh, looked like, I guess, might as well say Joe Thompson, uh, uh, actually Craig Nelson. Him and Craig Nelson was working really close here today. Tough, tough look on those guys there. Hopefully they'll be able to get that thing repaired and get back out here and uh, get back and be, uh, be competitors. Yeah, you can hear disappointment in his voice. They were running good. Tell you, just that little bit of slip up, it's you know hard to say if the car behind you pushed and got him a little sideways. Well, we did get a lucky dog that time around, and that's going to be the 67 car of Eric Motzenbogger. He's been raised, waved around, and I think he's going to be on the lead lap now, guys. Uh, Rick, will get one more car back to lead lap, see how many of them are out there damaged. Absolutely, uh, Tracy, and it looks like we got the 63 of Rodney Harris in the lead. Folks were under under the yellow flag right now and uh, we're going to break just for a few moments for a commercial and uh, we're going to be right back so don't you go nowhere it's about time for a refill on that Kool-Aid Cowboy, ain't no need to get the hammers out and tear it all up. What you need to do is get a hold of David Bass, DB Tech Services. Technology support offered at a price affordable to most churches, not-for-profits, and individual customers. I'll tell you what, David Bass, IT specialist, over five years at the corporate level. Hey, man, computer maintenance, hardware and software upgrades. I'll tell you what, David Bass, DB Tech Services, established specifically to provide lower-cost options to churches and non-profit organizations. So put the hammer away, dude. Get a hold of David Bass. DB Tech Services. DBTechService.com. And welcome back, folks, here at uh, Harold Lowry Super Speedway Series, Talladega, with 54 laps on the board. And we've got a total of uh, 85 laps that we're doing here today. So, uh, we're one lap at a time, Tracy. It's been uh, it's been great racing so far. Uh, seeing this new build that came out, seeing the lead changes that's taken place, uh, you know, it's a it's a toss up in the air who's going to be the man to beat here today. Yeah, I tell you what, you can tell the toss up in the air because now we got two new cars at the front of the pack. I haven't heard their name say tonight. The 63 of Rodney Harris, all the way up to first position, followed by the 41 of EJ. Or or O'Rourke, he's tell you moved up to second, and tell you what, EJ, I believe last time we uh, had him running, he actually took the win. I do believe. I believe you're right, and uh, you know, don't forget about that number 24 is running in third, Seth Demerchant. Uh, now that kid there, he's pretty strong as well. I know that uh, there was one race he finished third in, and uh, he just basically ran out of laps. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see. What takes place? Notice that oh, uh, our, our number one points leader Ronnie Royal is running back there in 13th spot. Uh, did do we know whether he got into that accident earlier or not, Tracy? Yeah, I believe Ronnie got caught up in a in that crash, and I uh, tell you what, did some damage. Uh, Crew's been working on the car, throwing some bear bond on there, getting it straight out as best they can to try to get on the best finish. They know that they need to stay up there and get move up toward in the top 10 to, for a uh, points that he's since he's a leader try to stay up there in that top five well definitely uh, Tracy and the thing is, is like we talked about earlier before closing into the season here those points really count uh, for each and every one of these guys 
whether you're leading the race or whether you're you're back there in the back of the pack, it's very important to make sure you finish this race uh, so that way you get the points. Yeah, every point counts. Just ask uh, what happened at the end of the, the, the Sprint Cup Series there. Every point counts as uh, we found out there at the end of that race being a tie. But these guys are doing a great job. Tell you, we've got a few new guys up front. Now the question is, who's going to hook up together? We know that 91 and 92 car definitely are going to be hooked up together, working their way forward. I haven't seen too much from Rodney Harris or E.J. O'Rourke, see which two of them hook together, or whether or not Seth DeMerchant and Freddie Moskowitz is going to hook up with somebody. Absolutely, and I was just looking at the leaderboard here right now, Tracy, and out of we have 33 drivers. We've got 16 drivers that are either one lap or several laps behind, but you're looking at Jason Orlando being your first guy to be the lucky dog if those guys do give out lucky dogs. Uh, right in behind him is Bob Ingalls, uh, the number 21 machine. And actually, my leaderboard just changed. It looks like Rich Jett will be uh, the next guy to follow up with that. But uh, ending that end of the field in the 15th position is Ricky Jenkins, and he's definitely a player here that uh, is a man to watch out for because he's, he's got a strong machine out there as well. Yeah, I'm taking a look at a few of these cars back there. I tell you, the three of Craig White, huge amount of damage on the front of that car still. And also, and he tell you, it's going to be a real difficult time for him to get up to speed. Look at how things are shuffling out here. They give you your top ten. Roddy Harris is first. E.J. O'Rourke is in second. Third place, Seth DeMerchant. Fifth, fourth place, the five of Fred Monawanchi. Hope, hope I get that right. Uh, fifth place, I do Jeremy Baysmore. Sixth place is Barry Jacobs Jr. Seventh is Jason Edge. Eighth is Scott Hudson Hussinger. Tracy, and we, ninth uh, we got... is Eric Motzenbogger. And tenth is Craig White. Tracy, we got a green. Uh, the, the pace car is off the field, and we're about to get a green lap. Green flag. Green, green flag. has dropped, and we're off to the racetrack again. And it looks like the uh, number 63 is leading the pack here. Uh, who is that 63? That'd be Rodney Harris. Rodney Harris leading this pack around. Tell you the first two guys I knew who were going to connect up were that 92 and 91. Absolutely, and if you'll notice, uh, E.J. Oric on the outside there, following in behind him, Seth the Merchant, and you've got others that's following. Fred Mawasami and Jeremy Baysmore all followed out. Now you've got uh, going down into turn three. It still looks like uh, the 41 of E.J. Oric is out in the front, Tracy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just love saying that name because these guys up here in the booth make fun of me every time I say it. So uh, they say it's Oric, but I tell you, I'm probably a little bit Southern. So E.J. Oric, that's the way I say it, but you know who you are out there. And uh, I apologize for my accent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, they worked on my accent, too, out there, so I can I can tear up a name better than anybody, I think, out there. But, yeah, they're doing a great job up there in front. That's 41-24, working together, pushing each other, doing going to be great. But once they have to make that switch over, we're going to find out how well them two cars do it. And it looks like the 31 of uh, Jason Inch and that 67 of Eric Motzenbogger Motzenbacher have connected together and pushing their way forward. That's right, Tracy. You have EJ Oric and Seth the Merchant working together, bumper to bumper, going into turn one there. Uh, smooth entry. Looks like they're going to have a smooth coming out of that out of turn two there. And uh, they're opening up that lead uh, on Barry Jacobs Jr. with a 0 0.669 seconds in front of them. And if they're not careful, they're going to they're leave them behind. But. Uh, Looks like uh, the 91 of uh, Barry Jacobs has got a buddy there following behind him with Scott Hunsinger. And uh, they're starting to, actually they're starting to gain back on EJ and Seth up front. Yeah, he left his buddy behind in that 92 car, Jeremy Bazemore, who worked really well with him. Worked up the way forward and gets the other car helping him, the 92. No help as everybody's just going right by him. It looks like the 32 car. 
has just moved up in front of him, knowing the car he was pushing had a lot of damage, guys. Yeah, the uh, watching up front up here again, Tracy. Uh, it looks like uh, looks like uh, Barry and uh, Jacobs Jr. and Scott Hunsinger is uh, working that inside on the bottom apron, going into turn three. Got a good run, and uh, EJ and Seth working that top uh, groove up there, uh, still holding holding its place. Question is, where's the lap down car? I seen there catch up. He moves all the way down onto the apron, heading into pit road. Let these guys race. Tell you what, great job. Tell you, running the middle groove, not scrubbing as much speed off as running the bottom groove with the 91 down there. But tell you, they got a heck of a rate of free speed heading there. Now the question is, when are they going to do the big dreaded switch over when these cars start getting a little too hot? <laughs> I don't think anybody at this point in time in this race wants to let anybody in front of them. But uh, the, the way this new build is, I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of choice in the matter. Um, you know, another thing, Trace, let me ask you this. In this new build, um, I noticed these cars here, they're, they're, they're too wide going in thir turn three and turn four there. Are they going to get a better draft working with two cars, or is there a reason why these guys are not maybe following in behind the others? Yeah, from understand that uh, you're bet off of two cars. You put three cars together, the third one pretty much just falls off of that top group. Really doesn't give them any help or help that third place car. But as soon as you fall off the back of the guy fronting and running in front of you, you're going to lose up to, uh, it sounds like, between six to nine miles an hour. Just that moment you pull off that back bumper, even two feet, really affects your speed. So these guys are going to really have to work hard. To keep them nose to tail, as I'm watching back here, as our back, some of our little our back groups running two by two, trying to keep them together and run down that lead pack, but it doesn't seem like they're making a lot of time on them. Right, Tracy. And I just now noticed as well that uh, E.J. Orrick and uh, Seth Demerchit, they've switched those places there. Orrick let uh, Demerchit go ahead and get in front of him there for a few laps, and I believe up front uh, Scott Hunts Hunsinger is taking the lead and uh, Barry is kind of tucked in behind him uh, letting that engine rest. Yeah it looked like they just did the switch over and did it in pretty good fashion up there didn't lose a whole lot of time and that's exactly what you need if you're going to win this race because now the other group back there is going to stay up to stay behind the other guy a little longer if they want to get by you and try to get some space as soon as they switch out they're going to lose that half a second again to the front group who are still pushing those the tail. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, these guys are side by side coming out of turn four, uh, two and two, just like you said earlier. They're working two and two, uh, Orc in behind the Merchant, and then you've got uh, Jacobs that's in behind Hunsinger, uh, and of course it looks like the Merchant's going to lead that lap, followed in behind Orc. Yeah, I tell you, this lead group doing a great job with that draft going to be interesting to see if that second group can use that draft or the first two in front of them seems to help them a little bit as they're they got up behind them moved a little closer jumped to that high line and it looks like they just kind of stalled out guys <laughs> absolutely and uh these guys looks like uh wow uh barry jacobs jr is the next guy behind him is uh, 3.7 seconds behind him, and that would be Jeremy Baysmore driving the 92 machine. Uh, Tracy, those guys are they're starting to work on it a little early. We've seen a four and a half second lead on some folks, and uh, we're starting to get them back up there again uh, with 64 laps on the board. Yeah, I tell you what, time is starting to click down as we're almost down to that magic 20 laps to go, Mark. Until we got quite a few guys working that two-car tandem, trying to get back up there. I'm watching uh, two cars work together here: the 67 of Eric Motzenbacher and and also the seven the seventh place of the 31 of Jason Edge. Them two guys have been working really hard to get back up, and make up some space, as they are five and a half seconds back from our lead group. Matter of fact, they're almost a second behind. Uh, looks like the 92 of uh, Jeremy Baysmore, who is left all by himself out there running, guys. Absolutely. And uh, is that some of the guys that were probably in the wreck earlier there, uh, Tracy? Yeah, I know that uh, the 67 car was caught up in one of the, the early first wrecks. It looks like his car, they got it put back together pretty well. And I don't believe Jason 
inch has ever been caught up in too much. He kept his car pretty clean, so these guys should be able to run pretty fast. As long as that top group keeps battling the way they've been, hopefully maybe they'll come back to them. It looks like they've uh, taken some time. Now they're only 4.2 seconds behind our leaders. Absolutely. I was just noticing a little earlier, it looked like Craig White came out of the pits. It looks like the uh, pit crew uh, banged on the sheet metal a little bit, got some things tore away, and getting back on the track again, get those points on the board, uh, get in here and uh, try to finish this race at least. It looks like Craig is uh, running about four laps behind at this point. But uh, I want to move on back here to uh, Scott Hunsinger and Barry Jacobs. Those guys... Uh, Seem to be working pretty good with each other. Yeah, I tell you, the Oric and the Merchant seem to have gotten away from those other two cars and are kind of pulling away as they have almost got a two-second lead on that second group. Two cars of uh, Barry Jacobson Jr. and Scott Huntsinger. Uh, tell you what, they know you need to get nose to tail and start working together as these two cars are making some distance on them as we're down to look like. 18 laps to go, I believe. Absolutely, and uh, I'm watching the knee, uh, the number 32 machine and the 92. Looks like they've hooked up, and uh, wow, I'm trying to. Here we go, Jeremy Baysmore, and uh, I believe it's Jason Inch. Those guys are working together. Yeah, I tell you, they got a long ways to go to catch up to that. Lead pack group, not too sure what happened with Jason Itch and Eric Motzenbacher, but they have now backed down to seven seconds behind our lead group. They were actually gaining time. They were down to 4.2 seconds. Somewhere they lost three seconds. Absolutely. And I want to make a correction on this. Jerry Baysmore is the number running in the 92 machine, and the 32, it looks like it's going to be Rich Jett. So I think Rich Jett, he is... Uh, I believe he is about two two laps down, so he may be trying to help uh, help that guy there and get him on up there and try to be a contender in this thing. Yeah, I tell you, the laps are ticking down. You got our lead two cars doing a pretty good job, but they actually the second two cars have chopped some time out. They almost had a two second lead. Now it's down to 1.4 seconds. So. That guys are doing a great job. Just need to stick together as long as they can to really start chopping to that time and get back up there and make get back into try to get that win tonight there, Rick. Absolutely, Tracy, and I'm watching that 66 machine. Patrick Wheelman. I, I tell you, I know it's uh, pronounced as Patrick Wheelman, but uh, I'm going to have to say Patrick Wheelman. He is still wheeling that thing, 183 mile an hour around here, and that car is messed up pretty bad. Uh, at least he's going high in the corners and so forth and letting the guys go by. Again, points is a factor. Points is a big factor in this race. And uh, closing in at almost, uh, we're 68 laps into this. Uh, Tracy, what about fuel? How is that going to play a role in this? I'm not too sure how we're going to do on fuel. I think everybody's good to go as when they come across the lineup here. It's going to be 15 laps to go in this race. So these guys are really going to have to get hooked up and get moving. As I said, the laps are clicking down. And Seth DeMerchant and E.J. O'Rourke doing a great great job up front there with the 1.3 second lead. Absolutely. And uh, Seth DeMerchant going really high there in turn one, but closes in on the back door of E.J. O'Rourke coming out of turn two, uh, catching back up with him and uh, working together as a team. Uh, and in behind them, you still got Scott Humsinger running in third in the number 34 machine, and following behind him, the number 91 of Barry Jacobs Jr. Yeah, I'm keeping a lot. Look back here in the pack, seeing these cars that are getting uh, tied up two by two. And I tell you, we got a couple guys just came, moved up forward there a little bit, taking up a few spots. The 15 of Mark Johnston. Being pushed by the 63 of Rodney Harris, doing a great job. Got around the 31 and 67 to take those spots. Looks like they're going to be making a switch over, get that uh, car cooled down. They're going to start pushing again as they got the two cars right on their back bumper. 
<laughs> Absolutely, Tracy. I was just sitting there watching the same thing. Uh, those guys making that switch there and uh, focusing on again uh, back here toward the back. We've got a good group of guys here with uh, Rodney Harris back here running in the, uh, it's like the 63 machine. Actually, I believe that was the, uh, yes, yeah, the number 63 machine and uh, followed in behind him uh, is going to be Mark Johnson. Those guys are working together. So, again, we're seeing two and two mm -hmm. Uh, of these guys working together here to try to catch the pack. Uh, but you know, it seems, Tracy, that when these guys are running a pack, they're not gaining as much momentum as if they could if they just run two by themselves. Yeah, I'm taking a look here towards the front. 91 and 34 working great together. Really cut into that lead as they're now down to eight tenths of a section coming up to the leader. So you give them these guys another lap or two. And they'll right be up them leaders, Rick. Absolutely, Tracy. And we're into lap 72, getting ready to close into lap 73. We're going to take just a few moments and uh, we'll see what happens. So, folks, uh, don't go away. We'll be right back right after these important messages. Dig, dig, dig. Hard as you can go, all the way to the wall. Dig, dig, dig. Back to the feet. Tires look awesome too, bud. And there at the end, you were mowing down those guys pretty quick. Alright, guys, bearing down on your 20, hard and fast. <laughs> Welcome back, guys, here at Talladega, the Harold Lowry Super Speedway Series. I still, uh, that's still a mouthful for me there, and uh, want to touch base to see you over there in our chat room there, Harold, and uh, we really appreciate you being here today, and thanks for, uh, thanks for providing the show that we're able to uh, stream here for you live. Hey, we had a good race going there for the lead for a little bit, as uh the 91 and 34 were up side by side with our lead two cars, Seth the Merchant and EJ O'Rourke. But I tell you, they had to make a switch over and lost a lot of time. Kind of fell back, back to that eight tenths back as we are down to eight, nine laps to go. Yes, and Tracy, nine laps to go. Uh, anything still can happen. We're here at Talladega. Uh, and it looks like Auric just went under. D Merchant, D Merchant's been going high in those corners, and uh, don't know whether they meant to do that. D Merchant needed to do that, or uh, D Merchant had some type of uh, tire problem there. Well, I Trace. tell you what, they're, just, they're doing a great job up there, but them two cars are making a run at them again. I tell you, this is our two group. We're going to look at for getting this win tonight. Just a matter of that switching around. I tell you. The 41 car is leading them around, but I tell you, the 91 car, he's got a head of steam on that outside lane, trying to, trying to slingshot around them guys. 
Absolutely, Tracy. And here we are dwindling down the laps. And now here we got four cars up in the front. We have got E.J. or Seth the Merchant, Barry Jacobs, and Scott Hunsinger. They are probably, we're going to see a battle now between now and the end of this race to see what that two and two can do. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see which of these set of cars is going to have to make the switcher Rugo come up here. Or can these guys just stick it out like this and uh, run those cars hot? All right at the moment, I tell you that they're doing a great job staying nose to tail. Really can't make a switcheroo now. I think they're going to watch these guys if they're going to do the switch up. Look for them to do it with, I would say, about five laps to go there, Rick. Absolutely. And this is going to definitely put you on the edge of your seat. And now we see the 34 of Scott Heens in, in Hunsinger. Lord have mercy. You got me so excited. I can't even talk, Tracy. He's pulled out in front of uh, Jeremy Baysmore. And we've got a slow car coming up. And those guys, of course, go low. And uh, they're going to follow right in behind uh, D. Merchant as they go across the start and finish line, Tracy. Down to six laps to go. I'll tell you what, them two get a, a great job getting switched. They didn't fall off nearly as much as they did earlier. Uh, he's right back there, but them two cars got to get that get that bumper to that bu bumper and uh, help give them a push. They're trying to hang in there right now. The question is, does, uh, does the 41 and 23, are they going to have to do the switcheroo? And when are they going to do it? Because it's going to slow them down and look for the 34 and 91 to go zooming by them. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Tracy, uh, EJ or he's got a lot of experience driving these things. Seth the Merchant, he's a young kid. He's very ambitious. So uh, it's going to be the old school versus new school to see how this plays out. Uh, they know that they've got Scott Hunsinger and Barry Jacobs right in their mirror as they look out the back window. And... Uh, anything up oh, there goes the switch now into turn one or it goes high the merchant goes low or it comes in behind the merchant follows in behind him and uh, got a good run coming out of turn four yeah i'm not too sure what 3491 we're doing somehow they got broke up just before they did the switch but if you look at them two cars got hooked up first and they go pushing by them on the outside to take the, over the lead let's see if they can't hang on to that lead by the time we come to that third finish line rick Absolutely, and uh, looks like uh, Scott Hunsinger, oh, did he just took, I think he just took the lead, Tracy, and falling in behind him, Barry Jacobs, Jr. Oh, yeah. And the Merchant looking on the inside with Oric behind the Merchant. Tell you, they cut down, got in front of them guys, tried to slow them up a bit. They got a good run, got by him by quite a few Quite a bit of distance, and today we're down to four laps to go. They're going to come around down the back, so it's going to hit that front row. get that three to go. It looks like the 41 and the 24 got hooked back up together again, making a run at them coming through three and four here. But two cars separate out. I'm making sure if they're making the switch once again. Orc on the inside under the Merchant makes the switch. Orc wants to get up there. He is telling the Merchant, push me, push me, before they we lose them. Uh, it's, it's coming down to uh, what we got now. We got four laps three. left. Three laps left, Tracy. Three laps left. Uh, and it looks like first and second spot is pulled away a little bit. Going into turn one, looks like Barry has went under Scott Hunsinger. They're getting ready to make the switch. Yeah, I tell you what, though. you got to think about it. You've got to accept they got a hungry driver back there. In that 24 car, Seth the Merchant, he really wants to win. And so does you know, 41. Are these two going to be able to work together all the way to the end to Tracy, take the win? Tra Is they're doing a switcheroo again there, Rick? Tracy, we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing a lot of switcheroos take place, and the Merchant's not going to let Oric leave out on that outside out there. He Oric has been with the Merchant just about the whole race, and that was a smart move that young man just did. He didn't leave him out. Now, they're going to be moving up into some slow traffic, so this is where we're going to see something take place. I, Hey, Tracy, I, I just heard some radio communications coming from the 41 crew chief. He told him fourth place doesn't get you an interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, though, I think you got a little egos battling out there, too, to go with that. And I tell you, in this kind of racing where you're having to push the guy in front of you, having an ego is not going to help you I get a win or even get a decent, decent finish. You need to stick with somebody. And I tell you, once you're at a certain point, 
you just got to hang with him on that back bumper and uh, be satisfied with second. <laughs> well, Tracy, uh, I want to say this, that when it comes to racing, having, uh, having a teammate to work with is one thing, but uh, at some point in that time, it comes down to the last few laps, and it, every man's out for themselves. We're down to the last lap, guys. In the turn one, we have got Barry Jacobs Jr. leading the race with Scott Hunsinger running second, Seth the Merchant following him in third place, and in fourth, we've got E.J. Oric on tell the you back what, stretch. Tell you what, though, we could tell you who settled for second place, and that's Scott Hunsinger. Because he hasn't came off that bumper of that 91 car the whole time. And you got the two cars back there, Seth the Mer Merchant. E.J. Arroyo oh, fighting over it. He got a crash got right in front of the leaders. Oh, oh it, it looks out, like uh, It took out the 24 car, got taken out, guys. Seth the Merchant. Seth Who's the our Merchant leader? Jacob Barry's our leader right now. Barry Jacobs. Barry Jacobs was knocked out there. I believe E.J. Oric may have this thing, uh, Tracy. You ever had to take away for the standings in? I don't think so. I think the 34 car is still moving. Let's see if uh, Jerry Wolf has got anything on this. Jerry, 34 you got car is still moving. All righty. And we don't have anything right now. We got. Still Oric. green. This is the final lap. The 34 car is still out there leading. He's actually got the 5 car giving him a push. He made it through that big crash. And uh, I'll tell you what, the 41 car, he's. Quite a ways back. Don't see him going to get up there and take over this win. But it looks like Scott Hunsinger in that 34 car is going to take your win tonight, guys, as he's coming to the start-finish line. What a race, Tracy. What a race. You know, I kind of got mind-boggled there when I saw those guys get up, and uh, I was looking for all those those four cars up in front. And uh, I saw Oric uh, wreck, and then... Uh, Looked like he got tapped or so forth. He made it through the field, but that's who I zeroed in on my camera with, and I, I couldn't find Scott Hunsinger. But uh, a good win for Scott here today. What a race we saw here today. Yeah, guys, I'm going back taking a look at this crash that happened. Took out a bunch of our guys, and the 91 made a move at the last second to go take a, a line in between our two lap down cars which ended up looking like it hooked him, and that's where that big crash started. Absolutely. A uh, fantastic race, and I'm sure Scott Hunsinger, uh, excellent race he came in here today. Um, looked like he qualified 16th here. He was patient. Him and uh, the other guy, gosh, I can't even think of his name right now. Those guys worked together. I'm just so excited, Tracy. What an end into a race that we saw here today. I'm happy for that young man out there. Yeah, I tell you what, had a great top three finishes with the 34 of Scott Hunsinger. Hunsinger and then you got the 41, E.J. O'Rourke, our winner from last week, finished second. Third place finish, the 92, Jeremy Bazemore. Did a great job getting through all those crashes and uh, getting this race finished there, Rick. Fantastic finish here, Tracy, and uh, the, the guy that I got kind of tongue-tied on uh, was Barry Jacobs Jr. that had been working with Scott Hunsinger. Uh, unfortunate for him, but fortunate for Scott, and E.J. Ort came out pretty good on this one as well. Uh, and you got to give a, a shout-out to Demerchit that was working with E.J. this evening. Those guys, you've seen a lot of guys out here working together with each other today, and that's what it takes, folks, is teamwork. Uh, to, to get somewhere, Tracy. Yeah, I tell you what, you need somebody helping you today, and uh, i tell you what, that's what we got to see there at the end. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I think what we'll do right now, we're going to take a break, and uh, we're going to come back, and uh, we're going to talk to some of these drivers, Scott Hunsinger, E.J. Oric, and Jeremy Baysmore. It came in third there. Tracy? Yeah, we'll get their interviews on, but we'll take a commercial and uh, come back to our interviews.
Welcome back here guys at Talladega Speedway with an awesome finish that we had. I'm with the uh, first place winner, Scott Hunsinger. Scott, you had a heck of a race and uh, a good finish there. Tell us about that lap that uh, we saw that wreck happen in. <laughs> well, I was just pushing my teammate Barry there and um, as we are getting into lap traffic, it was hard to decide. I couldn't really see where we are headed, but uh, I was just pushing there. Unfortunately, an incident happened and I just kept the, my foot down to the floor, and and it worked out for me. I got to thank the five for giving me a push there at the end. I couldn't have done it without him. Fantastic. And it looks like he was helping you there at the end. And you said that Barry Jacobs Jr. is now. You said that was your teammate? Yeah, correct. At uh, BDR Motorsports, we got uh, Barry, uh, Jeremy Baysmore, and Rich Jett. Uh, we tried to work together the whole race. I thought we, uh, the four of us were holding in there pretty well. Fantastic. I noticed earlier you and Barry was working very well with each other, uh, working together, switch, making the switch. Uh, noticed that the draft uh, was doing crazy things out there today, especially with two cars tied up with each other. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, You kind of want to stay in the draft, but at the same time keep your nose clean so you can get it cooled down quick enough so the next time you have to swap, you know, you'll have a, that extra few seconds of pushing. So it's kind of juggling both of those at the same time. Well, fantastic. Scott, we want to congratulate you, congratulate you on your first win here today. Uh, and also, is there any sponsors out there you want to say anything to? Uh, no real sponsors. I just want to thank my teammates and uh, thank VSR. This is a great league, one of the best I've been a part of. I'm really happy to be here. Fantastic, Scott. And again, congratulations to you. I'm going to take it on down to Tracy that's caught up with our second place finisher, EJ Oric. Yeah, I caught up with DJ down here. Great job getting a second place finisher up tonight. Uh, looks like you started from the back. Took a little while to find a partner in that two, two car tangle, huh? Yeah, well, I made agreement with the work with Seth, Seth the Merchant um, at the beginning of the race. I know he's in here for points, so uh, I decided to help him out. The only thing I had to go for was a win, so I thought I might as well help him. So we had a good two car tango going the whole race. Uh, we were hooked up, you know, missed the wrecks and kind of just hung back and made our way to the end in the last restart. Uh, we run pretty good, so it's a great race up here in VSR. Yeah, I tell you what, you almost had it for two weeks in a row. Just missed it by a little bit. That, tell us three. about that big crash. Oh, that would be three weeks in a row. I went to Arlington. <laughs> um, anyway, the big crashes, well, which one? Uh, there was a couple of them. Uh, pretty much we just stopped and missed the wrecks. And, uh, well, we knew there was going to be some. You know, we, you can't run two-car tangles really long because you overheat so people started pack racing you had a couple two car tangles but they were swapping it gets here everyone you know everyone runs together and then you got to swap because everyone's going you know dicing between each other and it just gets insane and you know sometimes you get hooked and i think that's how the first couple wrecks happened but it's point.com chevy and Paula made it through everything and you know brought it home second to scott all right is there anybody like a shout out to well, uh, I see my family and everybody that supports me. My sponsors, Point.com, Lily Trucking, my team, Zach Hudson and Motorsports. Um, just, I don't know, VSR, everyone over here, Chuck. All right, guys, that's your second place finish for tonight. The 41 of EJ O'Rourke, and I'm going to throw it. I do believe, Jerry, you caught up a third place finisher. Yeah, I'll tell you what, J.D., I'm here with that 92 of Jeremy Baysmore. Jeremy, great race there, and, and, and at the end it kind of got a little hairy, and I noticed uh, – was you caught up in the front pack there when that accident took place there at the end? No, man. I was running back in fifth and just got lucky from somebody else's bad luck. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of a lot of twisted up race cars here tonight. But you pulled out of here with the third place finish, so you got to be happy with that. Oh, yeah. I just really want to say thanks to uh, Scott, BDR Racing, for bringing me on. I think it's going to be a great league. Awesome, buddy. Anybody else you want to throw some shout-outs to before we let you go? Just the rest of my team, uh, Barry Jacobs Jr. and uh, Rich Jett. I couldn't have done it there at the end without him. All right, buddy. We'll let you get that race car packed up and get out of here for the night. Great race tonight, guys. Uh, a lot of action here in the VSR Harold Lowry Super Speedway Series. I'll tell you what, Rick Donathan, I'm going to throw it right back up to you and Tracy Robinson in the booth. Get us out of here. Absolutely. And, folks, Thank you for coming and watching ETV Live this evening. We hope you had a great time. Hope you didn't run out of Kool-Aid, and I hope you didn't run out of popcorn. But until next time, this is your host today, Rick the Law Dog Donovan, and we'll be seeing you soon.
Have a good night.